Hello, and welcome to the Bible with Brisco. Today, we are going to be covering 2 Samuel 9 through 11 and Luke 15, 11 through 32. Father, I just ask for clarity of voice and recognition and the ease of reading your word so that it'll be a blessing for you and for those who have tuned in today. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. And they all said, Amen. David and Mephibosheth. Boseth. 2 Samuel 9. David asked, Is there anyone still left of the house of Saul to whom I can show kindness for Jonathan's sake? Now there was a servant of Saul's household named Ziba. They summoned him to appear before David, and the king said to him, Are you Ziba? At your service, he replied. The king asked, Is there no one still alive from the house of Saul to whom I can show God's kindness? Ziba answered the king, There is still a son of Jonathan. He is lame in both feet. Where is he? the king asked. Ziba answered, He is at the house of Machir, son of Amil, in Loda Lodaber. When Mephil Boseth, son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, came to David, he bowed down to pay him honor. And David said, Mephil Boseth, as at your service, he replied. Don't be afraid, David said to him, for I will surely show you kindness for the sake of your father's Jonathan. I will restore to you all the land that belongs to your grandfather Saul, and you will always eat at my table. Mephos Boseph bowed down and said, What is your servant that you have, should sh notice a dead dog like me? Then the king summoned, then the king summoned Ziba, Saul's steward, and said to him, I have given your master grandson everything that belonged to Saul and his family. You and your sons and your servants are to Form the land for him, and bring in the crops, so that your master's grandson may be provided for. And Mephibosheth, 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 grandson of your master, will always eat at my table. Now Ziba had fifteen sons and twenty servants. Then Ziba said to the king, Your servant will do whatever my lord the king commands his servant to do. So Mesopotam ate at David's table like one of his king one of the king's sons. Mesopotam had a young son named Micah, and all the members of Ziba's household were servants of Mesopotam. And Mesopotam lived in Jerusalem because he always ate at the king's table. He was lame in both feet. David defeats Ammonites. Second Samuel 10 In the course of time, the king of the Ammonites died, and his son, Hanan, succeeded him as king. David thought, I will show kindness to Hanan, son of Nahum. Naish, just as his father showed kindness to me, so David sent a delegation to express his sympathy to Hanan concerning his father. When David's men came to the land of Am the Ammonites, the Ammonite commander said to Hanan, their lord, Do you think David is honoring your father by sending envoys to you to express sympathy? Hasn't David sent them to you only to explore the city and spy it out and overthrow it? 
So Hunnan seized David's envoys, shaved off half of each man's beard, cut off their garments at the buttocks, and sent them away. Then David was told about this. He sent messengers to meet them, for they were greatly humiliated. The king said, Stay at Jericho till your beards have grown back, and then come back. And when the Ammonites realized that they had become obnoxious to David, they hired 20,000 Aramean foot soldiers from Beth, Rahab, and Zobah, as well as the king of Micaiah, with a thousand men and also twelve thousand men from Tob. On hearing this, David sent Je Jeob out with the entire army of fighting men. The Ammonites came. The Ammonites came out and drew up in battle formation at the entrance of their city gate, while the Ammonite Ar Armenians of Zobah and Rehab and the men of Tob and Mecca were by themselves in the open country. Joab saw that there was were battle lines in front of him and behind him, so he selected some of the best troops in Israel and deployed them against the Armenians. Now he put the rest of the men under the command of Abishai, his brother, and deployed them against the Ammonites. Joab said, If the Armenians are too strong for me, then you are to come to my rescue. But if the Ammonites are too strong for you, I will come to your rescue. Be strong, and let us fight bravely for our people, and the cities of our God, the Lord will do what is good in his sight. Then Joab and the troops with him advanced to fight the Armenians, and they fled before him. And when the Armenites realized that the Armenians were fleeing, they, they fled before Abishai and went inside the city. So Joab returned from fighting the Ammonites and came to Jerusalem. After the Armenians saw that they had been re routed by Israel, they regrouped. Hadazar had Armenians brought Armenians brought be from beyond the Euphrates River and went to Helam and so Shoabach, the commander of Hadazar's army, and leading them. And when David was told of this, he gathered all Israel, crossed the Jordan, and went to Helam. The Armenians formed their battle lines to meet David and fought against him. But they fled before Israel, and David killed seven hundred of their chariots and Forty thousand of their foot soldiers. He also struck down Shabak, the commander of their army, and he died there. When all the kings who were vassal of Hadazer saw that they had been routed by Israel, they made peace with the Israelites and became subject to them. So the Armenians were afraid to help the Armenites any more. David and Bathsheba, Second Samuel 11. In the spring, at the time when king, uh, kings go off to war, David sent Joab out with the king's men and the whole Israelite army. They destroyed the Ammonites and besieged Rehabba, but David remained in Jerusalem. One evening, David got up from his bed and walked around on the roof 
of the palace for the roof for uh, from the roof he saw a woman bathing the woman was very beautiful and david sent someone to find out about her the man said she is bathsheba the daughter of eliam and the wife of uri the hittite then david sent messengers to get her she came to him and he slept with her now she was purifying herself from her monthly uncleanliness and then she went back home the woman conceived and sent word to david saying i am pregnant so david sent this word to joab send me uriah the hittite and joab sent him to david when uriah came to him david asked him how joab was how the soldiers were and how the war was going then david said to yura go down to your house and wash your feet so yura left the palace and a gift from the king was sent after him but yura slept at the entrance to the palace with all his master's servants and did not go down to his house david was told yura did not go home so he asked yura haven't you just came from a military campaign why did you not go home yura said to david the ark and israel and judah are staying in tents and my commanders joab and my lord's men are camped in the open country how could i go to my home to eat and drink and make love to my wife as surely as you live i will not do such a thing then david said to him stay here one more day and tomorrow i will send you back so you are remained in jerusalem that day and the next <clears throat> at david's invitation he ate and drank with him and David made him drunk. But in the evening, Hira went out to sleep on his mat among his master's servants. He did not go home. In the morning, David wrote a letter to Joab and sent it with Hira. In it, he wrote, Put Hira out in front where the fighting is fiercest. Then withdraw from him, so that he will be struck down and die. So while Joab had the city under siege, he put Yura at the place where he knew he, the strongest defenders were. When the men of the city came out and fought against Joab, some of the men in David's army fell. Moreover, Yura the Hittite died. Jacob sent David a full account of the battle. He instructed the messenger, When you have finished giving the king this account of the battle, the king's anger may flare up, and he may ask you, Why did you get so close to the city to fight? Don't you know they would shoot arrows from the wall? Who killed Ambalak, son of Cherub? Beshith. Don't a woman drop an upper mistletoe millstone on him? Didn't a woman drop an upper missile mill, millstone on him from the wall so that he died in Thesbes? Why did you go get so close to the wall? If he asks you this, then say to him, Moreover, your servant Uriah the Hittite is dead. The messenger sent set out, and when he arrived, he told David everything Joab sent him to say. And the messenger said to David, The man overpowered us and came out against us in the open, but we drove them back to the entrance of the city gate. Then the archers shot arrows at the servants from the wall, and some of the king's men died. Moreover, your servant Uriah the Hittite is dead. David told the messenger, Say this to Joab, Don't let this upset you. The sword devours one as well as another. 
press the attack against the city and destroy it. Say this to encourage Joab. When Uriah's wife heard that her husband was dead, she mourned for him, and after the time of mourning was over, David had her brought to his house, and she became his wife and bore him a son. But one, but the thing David did not had done displeased the Lord. Okay, that was Second Samuel nine through eleven. Now we'll be moving into Luke fifteen eleven through thirty two. The parable of the lost son. Jesus continued. There was a man who had two sons. The younger one of said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got together all he had, set off for a destiny, distant country, and then squandered his wealth in wild living. After he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in that whole country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country, who sent him to his fields to feed pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. When he came to his senses, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have food to spare? And here I am starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father's to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against you, heaven and against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. So he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him, and kissed him. Then the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fatted calf and kill it. Let's have a feast to celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and now is found. So they began to celebrate. Meanwhile, the older son was in the field. When he came near the house, he heard music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked him, what was going on? Your brother has come, he said. He replied, and your father has killed the fatted calf, because he has come back safe and sound. The old brother became angry and refused to go in. So his father went out and pleaded with him. But he answered his father, Look, all these years I have been slaving for you and never disobeyed your orders, and yet you never gave me even a young goat, so I could celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours, who has squandered your property with prostitutes, comes home, you kill the fatted calf for him. My son, the father said, you are always with me, and everything I have is yours. But we have to celebrate and be glad, because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and now is found. Okay, that concludes Second Samuel 9 through 11 and Luke 15, 11 through 32. And that concludes the Bible with Briscoe 2020 for today. And tomorrow we will be covering Second Samuel 12 through 13 and Luke 16. So, Father, I just ask that this was a blessing to you and those who got to tune in today. And I also ask that um, you be able to bless the um, whole world with 
following of this and that you increase the number of those who who uh, watch it in Jesus mighty name amen and they all said amen all right thank you folks for tuning in this has been Chendo Briscoe and I'd like to welcome you to the Bible with Briscoe 2020 every day um so and uh, you know God bless you God loves you and so do I so come back and see me tomorrow because well I'll be here and I hope that you are too